Okay, what are we doing today? Well, we're going to be doing a watercolour painting. Um, I'm going to be painting from an oil painting I did about a month, six weeks, well, a month ago, six weeks ago. Um, and it's this painting here, but we're going to be doing the watercolour version today. Okay, it's this painting looking down from Worcester Cathedral, not far from where I live. And what we're looking for our watercolour is capturing the light um, within the painting. So we're looking to capture this area okay, of light in the watercolour. That's what our aim is, that's what our goal is, okay, not to lose that. Um, what it is in this painting is the darks make the lights and that's what we're going to have to preserve in our watercolour. Will be a bit more testing doing it in watercolour than it is in the oils, I think so because in oil painting you can take as much time as you like and you can really think about it but you've got to make a lot of decisions quickly in watercolour unlike oils so it will be a bit harder um i'm going to talk you through the whole thing as i paint this isn't going to be i'm not going to talk about it afterwards over so i'm not going to narrate over it as i paint i'm going to be telling you exactly what i'm doing uh from start to finish so, so it's going to run for quite a bit longer so, but I, I think it's worth sticking to the end. If you're a beginner and you really want to learn about watercolour, I think you, you'll be, you should be able to get a lot from this uh, demonstration. I haven't done a full demonstration yet since we've been back on YouTube. So I hope you're going to get something from it. So sit back or get your paints ready, whatever you want, and uh, take some of the ideas. You'll also see my palette and me mixing the colours too. Okay, so yeah, let's uh, go on with it. Let's uh, start painting. Okay then, let's get started. Um, I'm going to just uh, sketch it out first, which I'll speed up um, so you don't have to watch for too long. And uh, But some people like to see the drawing process, other people don't care for it, but I try and mix it up a bit. I'm just going to roughly sketch it out. Nothing, just, 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 I'm looking for shapes. I'm not looking for detail at this stage. I'm just looking for overall shapes, okay? Uh, so I'm, I kind of look at the photograph, the image, and there's probably four or five distinct shapes there I'm going to plot out. Um, sometimes it's useful to mark off places first, maybe where you're going to have the top of the bridge on your page. Um, I reckon that's going to be about there, something like that. And then the trees are going to come out just kind of around halfway, I suppose. I'm just going to kind of sketch those in very loosely because it's going to be a very loose painting and this painting is all about the light it's not about detail not about anything like that there's the house there just a few little pencil lines and that's all we're going to do okay so it's no big deal um, in the sense of that anyone that can't says they can't draw this is the painting for you because it's all in the painting um, roughly that's going to go up to about there maybe not quite that far and it goes off now this is a place in Worcester I often walk and I've painted here quite a bit um, it's the old it's by the old um, by the cathedral not the old, well it is old um, it's a lovely spot so I'm just going to roughly mark the top of the bridge in there okay and the underneath of the bridge is going to go about there I reckon now some people sort of worry about the arch just try and do it in a you're doing half a semicircle roughly if it doesn't look quite right don't beat yourself up over it it's as long as it's You've got it roughly, roughly there. It will be fine. Okay, so we got that, that, that. We got this coming down here, and then we've got steps there. And we've got a step here. This is very dark. This area is going to be over here. It's going to have a nice lot of greens in it and stuff like that. Okay, I'll speed the rest of the drawing up now and uh, we'll get finished.
Okay, there we go. R quick run through of the colours. We've got alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, medium, uh, lemon yellow, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, burnt sienna and cadmium orange. And the two brushes I'm going to use today are probably these two. I might go with something a bit smaller later or a line brush to do some line work later. But uh, at the moment, this is all that I'm going to be using for the time being. I'll let you know if I change my mind. I also have, make sure you've always got plenty of this because it helps me clean this palette up because I'm using that at the moment. I'm enjoying using this. It kind of reminds me of the oil paints a bit, I don't know why. And I've also got a little spritzer bottle. Should any area start drying out and I want to keep it wet, I can quickly spray it and just keep, helps keeps it moist. But that, that gives a very, very fine spray. Very fine spray. I might even give it a very fine spray just around here to keep these edges wet around the trees. We'll see. Depends how quick I am, really. Okay, let's start mixing some colour. So we're gonna, like this is going to be a step-by-step -step one and it's going to be very, very simple in the sense that we're not going to make it complicated. So I'm going to start off with some lemon yellow because that's going to be the highlights for the trees. I'm going to get those down first. Then we're going to get some um, other colours into that while it's still wet. So we're going to mix up some green as well. And for that I'm just going to use some ultramarine. Keeping it, you know, this is, this, these aren't going to be complex mixes or anything like that. They're going to be straightforward mixes. Um, this is going to, this is to start running into the, uh, the lemon yellow as we, as it does the edges. As we want to do the edges. Right. Might just have a little bit of a warmer yellow as well, just to there. Okay, so I've got a bit of a choice. And I'm just going to spray that area a little bit, just to, don't know how much came out then. There we go. Don't want it to go too mad, I want it to run too madly into the sky. Actually, I've just lied. See, I can't even make my mind up. This is one, you know, I've not done that. <laughs> I'm going to paint a bit of sky first. Okay, so I'm just going to put some cerulean blue with a touch of cobalt blue. But cerulean blue on its own would be absolutely fine. And I'm just going to put that in here, like so. Try and keep my edges nice and tidy here. Now I'm going to rinse my brush out a little bit and just soften the edge down here a bit. Drag it into where the trees are going to be a little bit. Be all right. And I'm going to leave that. Now I don't want to touch that again. Okay, whatever happens there now happens and it's, as far as I'm concerned, job done. Okay. Now I'm going to get some lemon yellow. And I don't mind running it into the blue slightly because I've overpainted the blue into where I'm going with the green, so it doesn't mess up the sky at all. If that makes sense. This is, the, I find this part quite tense when you're painting. That first initial wash that you put down, I find myself get awfully excited and uh, rambly. Right, so just a bit of, bit of cad yellow and a bit of blue, and I'm just gonna start putting in a bit of the, Not right up to the edge because I want some nice glowing edges later on when we put, put the trees in, when we define those trees a little bit more. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, lizard and crimson in that blue there. I want it dark in this spot. I want to take some of that I'm going to be talking a lot now, okay, and rambling, because as I just said, you get awfully excited at this point. And 
and uh, you just you kind of forget even forget the cameras running a little bit. Um, right, that's that edge. But we will be we will be revisiting this to define these edges a bit better later on. I want a bit more blue. Been a bit heavy with the red in there. I'm covering a lot of ground with this brush. It's quite useful from that point of view. It's uh, you know a bit of lemon yellow. It's a bit too warm. Then I want to just get some highlights into here, some brighter blue, because there's a little bit of light catching the foliage down here, and that will come into play hopefully later on. So we'll just pop that down there, and I'll get some blue around it, and I'm just going to leave it like that for the time being. I don't think. This bit's kind of unteachable, really. It's it's practice, you, you, you know, because I can do it some days, and some days it works out. Other days, it's a it's a mess. But I keep kind of going till I think I've got the right amount of darks that I need. Um, and yeah, there we go. That's what I want to preserve. Just that little bit of light there, if I can. I'm using Cotman Studio. Um, artist, not artist quality, students quality paints only because I think they're great for beginners especially if the budget's a bit tight you're uh, you're not sort of like thinking oh my god can't afford to squeeze the paint out because it's so expensive you don't mind right we'll leave it like that for the time being and then we'll come back and add a bit more because I'm starting to fiddle a bit Hopefully all that will tie in later. Right, we're going to start adding some warmth to this wall here. So just where the red is, I'm putting a little bit of cad red in there to make some warm colours. Cadmium orange, because I, I want to get some warmth on this wall where the light's going to be hitting it. A bit too orange. More, a bit more yellow. So I don't mind putting that in now. A bit of blue as well in places across the top. A bit of that. And just to try not to work your colours in too much together. Try and let them separate slightly on the page because you get an awful, you get much nicer fresher feel to your painting um, it, it, let, it lets you get away with a lot um, just grey a bit of that colour we're going to be going over this again with much darker wash in a while ok this is just to yeah just to Put a bit of warm colour down so when the shadows are, uh, it's not just white paper. This is my way of doing it. I, w I don't say there's um, any real right or wrong, if you know what I mean. It's, uh, I'm just going to put some warm colours over this a minute, just because where the bridge is, hopefully, I'll just leave that like that. Hopefully they'll look a lot, they'll look a bit lighter. I need that to dry for a bit now, and then we'll. I might start putting the darks in here. Okay. And uh, let's see what happens. Right, we're getting crow cad orange. Gosh, too much cadmium orange. Some cobalt blue. See how messy my palette gets. That's okay. 
because the colours are all kind of fresh at the moment. A little bit of red. I don't want to go in yet because that sky is still wet. Just going to hold fire for a minute and wait for it to dry and then we'll do the next bit. Okay then we're going to go for the second round now and basically so we, we put our lights in then we put our darks on top and we've added a little bit of warmth to this side. At the moment it's looking a complete mess let's be honest but what we're going to do is hopefully link all this shape in together now by add, making this side very dark but we want some alum, alum, luminous colours, some reds and oranges in this because the stone's kind of glowing now a little bit and uh, it's going to look, hopefully, it's look fine. So we're going to do this area, do the shadow across here, up into there and brick, fit, brick, tie all that in together and paint our bridge. That's the plan. Okay. Now, because I'm going to be working quite dark, I haven't bothered to clean my palette. Okay, if I was working on very light colours, then I will, but I'll just clean this top bit. My board's on a, slight, on a, on a slight slant, so um, the colour's running down a little bit. I'm just gonna clean an area there and I can pick into those colours in a bit. So I want some, oh, look at that, dirty water, never mind. So I want some red, a bit more than that I want. Some red, we'll have some yellow, a bit more yellow there. And we're going to mix a lot of these actually kind of on the page. We're going to put some cerulean blue in there, that can go up there. And what else are we going to have? Some cobalt as well. And some alizarin and crimson which can go in there. So really, we've got some good colours there to go with. Right, I quite like that to start with. Let me just look at my picture. So I want to use the edge of this brush. And I don't want to mix these colours too much. I want to keep let them stay as fresh as possible on the page. If I start running the brush over there too many times, it's going to blend them all in together. And then... You're going to have a mess. Okay. That's, that's glowing a bit there. Okay. Try and get some yellows and oranges down this side. Um, I want some blue in there, some cerulean blue. So hopefully, I'm hoping you can with the camera, you can you can see. Right, there's some light hitting here on some greens. So I'm just going to pop some light yellow in there, and then I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave that. And there's the same up here, just some greens, a bit of red in there as well, warm it up. I'm going to leave that area there, so a bit more of that red, I'm just going to watch what I'm doing down here a second. I've got lots of cobalt blue in this area. And that's the path it's going to take. A bit more orange, a bit warm that up a little bit. Right, no, don't touch Patrick. Keep your hands away. Then I want to go into this area, which is deep in shadow. So if that, I want me darkest dark. So I'm getting me blues and me deep magenta, uh, red, and a little bit a lizarin. And I'm just putting me biggest darks in this side so they're a mixture of warm and cool going in where I know we've got the darkest areas 
we've got a dark area that comes down there. So if I've got a dark patch that really needs a, a big influence of dark, I assess is it warm or cool, that's kind of warm down there, and I put it in like that. Another one there, gone a little bit too dark there, but we won't worry about it. And that edge needs to come, okay. We've got a broken down wall here which we want to suggest. And we've got, yeah, I'll just go to that a bit more to suggest there's a handrail there. I've kind of lost it, but never mind. Should we put the bridge in or should we go across? We'll put the bridge in next. Now, the bridge, I want it to, again, I want that to sing out. So, get some red and lemon yellow. What are we doing for time? 5.14. It's okay. And I'm just going to start painting the, the top of the bridge in. Be careful, Patrick. That's it. Sorry if I'm breathing heavy. <laughs> can't help it when you're painting. I can't. Hmm. Oh, that is there. I'll leave that. For the time being, a bit more. Blue, come on this side. Let's try and get the shape of that bridge. Which I haven't really managed there. Okay, that'll do. And then there's a nice red down there glowing. Okay, just leave that there for a time being, not to fiddle. I'll just kind of cut into this a bit. I'm just preserving the edge because there's the lights catching those trees there. They're, they're really light against the, the brickwork. So I just want to leave that for a minute. Right, now I want to put my shadows across here. Okay. So we're going to come across very much in the same way, leaving some little light patches where the, the light's coming through the trees and stuff. That's a bit of cobalt, a bit of a zoom. So you've got some nice rich darks because I haven't gone like this and mixed all together. A lot of these colours are still separated and they kind of look quite good. So we've got a mixture again, mixture of warm and cool colours. I'm not going to go there. Keep the pressure on, I say, so keep those colours rich at this point. <coughs> uh. There's some there's light hit in this wall, so we're going to just try and leave some marks like that, just where the lights catching it. And it's the same there. Down there, the light is. I want a warm edge on there just on this shadow. Sometimes if you look at a shadow they've got a, they've got a warm edge, not a cool edge that's leading out to the light. 
and you won't, I haven't really achieved it there but it's what it is at the moment but okay all right let's just a bit more blue strengthen some of these up a bit a bit of cooler color this is where we are We don't mind that. We'll, we'll draw out the detail here in a little while. It's too wet now, so I'm going to leave that just while, it, while it's dry. Okay, so now we want to go down here and we want to just, there's a shadow that runs here. And where else is there? There's a little bit runs down there we'll just leave that for time being okay and then we've got okay right so now what we need to do is let that dry and then we can come back and have another look where we are. We've got the trees to put back here. We're going to draw a little bit of detail out in this area here. And then we can take the tape off and hopefully it won't look such a mess. Okay then, that's dried off a bit. I'll give them a palette a bit of a clean up. Just a bit of kitchen towel. Wiped it over. I'm just going to paint the greens in and the building in back here and that is just going to be literally a suggestion. We've got a bit of red, a bit of yellow, a bit of cad, cad red, cadmium yellow and just a touch of blue just to knock it back, that brown back a bit, that warm colour. I uh, don't want this too dominant because of, you know it's back there bit more warmth than that. Just pop that in like that. Leave it there. Then we'll just get a bit of uh, a bit of yellow. That can go in the same mix. A bit of cobalt blue. So we've got like a and a slightly so I've got the cooler, cooler green there and a warmer one there. Let's go back into that one. And I can just that's a bit more blue in it. There. As it oh, spread water everywhere. Just soften those edges a bit on the top. A bit warmth. Oh, there we go. It's a bit warmer there. Bit warmer on this side. There we go. Um, there we go. Just a little bit more green at the bottom. Both side we go. So we'll just leave that little bit there like that. And that's just like a little uh, suggestion of what's going on back there. We don't want to be... Let's get through those white bits. What I might do, because it's quite there's quite a lot of warmth just running through the bottom area, I might just put some yellow in there. It's not quite what I wanted, a bit brighter than that, but... Sometimes you, if you make a mistake, you just got to prepare to leave it and not mess about too much. Because unlike oil painting, which I do, for those that don't know, um, oil painting is a lot more forgiving. You can you can make a mistake in oil painting, and you've got all the time in the world to put it right. But unfortunately, you don't have that same. 
luxury with oil uh, watercolors. You've got to get that correction done, certainly while it's still wet if you can. And quick, yeah, quickly. There we go. Okay, just let that dry. And we just want to put a little bit of detail in here. I just want to mix up another green, a bit warmer. A bit blue, a bit more green. For the sake of doing this quickly, I'm contaminating, contaminating my colours a bit more than I would. I'd usually clean my brush a bit before I dip it back in there. But we're doing a demonstration here. And uh, we'll be here, I'd usually do, at least do that and then go back in if I want to go in again. So it's sort of this colour, so but I can clean these up afterwards, they'll clean up okay. But I would, you know, clean my brush a little bit. Right, so now we just want to draw a little bit of detail into here, suggest some of the leaves, but we don't want to go crazy. Mix it up a bit, different shades of yellow. Oh, well, there it is. I keep forgetting where my reference picture is. A bit darker there. Basically that's it, that's all we're going to do for that, for the time being, because if we fiddle too much we'll end up with a, a mess. Right, now this side here I just want to sort of uh, start pulling a little bit of the detail out if I can. A bit of burnt sienna in that blue, if I can get it out. Bit of ultramarine. And just start where this brickwork is. Start suggesting some of the bricks. Um, okay, because there's a kind of a line across there, really. But it is just a suggestion, we're not trying to... Yeah, that's probably enough really. Just put, try and pull out these... Remember that bit of light yellow I put in there? Just where there was some grass. over the edge. Get the same here, just carry that down. Give it a little bit of a definition. We can always uh, get some really thick paint some, sometimes just to put like, some highlights in here and there. Just don't overdo that sort of thing because if you overdo it it looks wrong. If you just put, if you just touch do it a couple of times it doesn't look too bad so basically what you do is just getting a little bit of paint a little bit thick opaque paint and uh, putting some highlights in you could use gouache I suppose but I just do a bit of watercolor it's enough just just to suggest a lot to suggest I'm gonna trip me over the words suggest a few areas uh, what else? I'm just going to make a nice dark bit of cobalt blue. I'm meant to go into a alizar and crimson. Just pull out a few of the darks under here. 
this wall. This is just suggesting some of the brickwork in the wall. But again, it's a really, really rough suggestion. Do, 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 do. Bit of the orange all up in places. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. Orange. Okay. Well, there's a little bit of greenery up there that I've missed. I'm just going to pop it in. A soften the edge. Okay. I'm just going to put the people in. Just very quickly sketch them in. You get a smaller brush for that. How small is that? That's probably about right. Start off with their with their heads. They both have the same colour hair. It's warm here today. It's cold outside, but it's warm in the house. I'm right by the right. A little bit of a uh, warmth it's for the back of their necks. We'll have a little bit of cerulean blue. For this one. And again, these are really, really just very because then I don't want them to stand up too low, too much. And we'll have, yeah, keep it. Okay, there we go. You can have a couple of little shadows. Just keep them there, just a couple of little figures, just to give it all a little bit of scale. A little bit of size okay so what we'll do now is just let that dry a minute and then we'll take the tape off okay then there we go um, so you take that tape off and it gives it nice clean edges and it looks a lot better but that gives you some idea we've this paint was all about the darks um, the dark areas here framing the picture and then we were going off into the light into the distance um, it was a really, it's a, it's a fun, it's a really good exercise for beginners because I think a lot of people fail to be able to get the darks that they need at the beginning. And I hope that, I hope I demonstrated it in a way that you, you were able to see. Obviously I can't share everything on a YouTube video because it's, it just takes too long. The whole process of explaining about the darks and laying them in. But I did give you a, a, a demonstration but as best as I could do in the time that we have uh, to, to show how that was demonstrated but not just about painting any old darks it's about keeping your darks colorful and lively um, don't be a slave to your photograph kind of like exaggerate those warm colors um, a good way of doing it, if you're going to paint from a photograph that's on your laptop put it in an editing program and crank up the saturation a little bit to uh, to make those colors brighter so you don't get caught into painting this much softer duller image that often photographs provide but the, the secret about this one was all about this area here, the focal point really, the, the light area that draws your eye down through and that tunnel, that, that bridge there that draws your eye through. You know, I've simplified a lot from the real thing. I didn't, I didn't stress over the drawing. I kind of made it very simple, just one, two, sort of three shapes really, if you want to look at it that way. Three big shapes, four big shapes, shapes maybe. And 
you know kept it we used a little bit of uh, just uh, pure pigment here just to highlight some of the greens um, the tree was just you know wet into wet then a little bit of dry brush on top just to suggest the leaves and everything around the top so it's a it's a, it's a simple painting but it's an effective painting because what we've done with the beauty of watercolor is all about capturing that light within a picture and you know we've, we've done it here I think and it's nice I've kept this really dull here um, just so it sits back I didn't want that too bright and it does I think and I've just suggested areas here with dry brush of brickwork and again you know it's a lot of it's just in your head you just sort of roughly suggest it in that so yeah overall I'm pleased with it and I think it's turned out okay and I hope you enjoyed the demonstration um, like and subscribe and all that stuff and uh, check out my website if you've got five minutes my paintings can be found on there for sale should anybody want any or want one um, mostly oils at the moment but uh, I'll be putting these watercolours up there soon for anybody that wants to yeah buy one so uh, anyway thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now